Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and we're outside today because in this video I'm going to show you the simplest way to get started shooting 360 virtual tours with a DSLR and that's to try something outside. No flash required, it's very simple, one single exposure for the various shots we're going to do. It'll get your feet wet so that you can understand how the process is done for stitching these together and then hosting that if you want to. So anyways, if you saw the last video, that's where I showed how to calibrate the pano head. If you haven't seen that yet, you might want to see that first because that's a critical step so you don't get a parallax error. It's a one-time thing. You don't have to keep doing it every time you set it up. Once you calibrate your pano head to your setup, then you're good to go. And now this is only going to take a couple minutes. Now, the uh, you're going to hear a lot of outside noise. I apologize for that. I'm in a very tight uh, community. We've got crows flying around. It's trash day. People are working in their yards and other stuff too. But I wanted to get this video to you and there's no opportune time when you live in crowded suburbia to be able to uh, get a noise-free environment. So please Please bear with me with that and we'll be upstairs in a quieter environment when we do the editing shortly. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be once again just to cover what I'll do, shown in the book by the way, which if you haven't gotten that you want to take a look at the ebook or the print uh, paperback version, I have a link to that in the description for this video. It's virtual for tour photography for real estate. What we're going to do in summary though is we're going to be rotating our pano head four times to go from 0, 90, 180, 270 for four shots. Then we're going to turn the camera straight up to do what's called the Z shot. I'm not going to worry about what's below because we can easily patch that. I show techniques for doing that in the book and I'm going to be covering also other videos on how to do that as well. After we're done with this video here shortly as I get more time, I'm going to show you then how you can take this all inside and take the next step which is all ambient inside like you would with a standard portable 360 camera but then taking it to the big daddy of 360 virtual tours and that's incorporating flash. So you get amazing crisp views to the outside, you get correct colors, all the things that you would benefit from flash but doing that. But first, baby steps, let's do something outside real quick. So what I'm going to do is I've got my pano head right now set to uh, position zero. There's no special triggers on here. I'm just going to use the camera on the uh, self timer. I've got my focus set, which is important. These fisheye lenses, this happens to be the Samyang F2.8 on a uh, full-framed uh, Nikon body. And uh, so it's manual focus, so I just make sure that I'm close to infinity. And I'm using the standard outside exposure, also listed in the book. Uh, we're at 500th of a second at ISO 200 F8. So uh, once we do that, and instead of using a trigger, I'll use self-timer. I'll just go ahead and take the first shot at zero degrees, step back, so I'm out of the shot. There we go. Uh, the timer would have done, uh, excuse me, the timer's doing the same thing as the shutter release. It allows me to step away because everything gets captured in these fisheye lenses. Okay, that was zero degrees. Move the pano head now to 90 degrees. Take the next shot. Just step out of the way here. Boom, that's easy enough. Now we'll turn it to 180 degrees. These are once again, just 90 degree increments. There we go. Take the next shot, step back out of the way. Okay, 270 is the next one. That's the next 90 degree increment. All right, let's take that one. Step out of the way. I'm in the glass over there. That'll probably show up. Okay, now I'm going to turn it back to zero degrees. And main reason is that it's not so much for the next shot, which is the zenith pointing up, but it's so that when I go to my next pano, I'm ready to go. So that's just a preference. But anyways, the next shot, the last one, number five, is we then turn the camera straight up. That's called the zenith. Take that shot. Get out of the way. I always crouch because that fisheye lens picks up everything. And that's it. Our pano is shot. We're ready to go ahead and stitch this and put this together and have some fun with it. Alrighty. You want to see how this is done now? Let's head inside, stitch it, and host it. Okay, now it's time to stitch this together and then host it. It's going to be a very simple process, but one of the tools you will need is PT GUI. Now, you can get a copy for free right now. It's going to put some watermarks on it, but you can go to ptgui.com. Com. Uh, I've got links to this, by the way, in the description for this video as well. It's a pertinent link uh, to help you with this. We're going to use a free tool called Marzipano to get some hosting done on this so you can see what it will look like. And then if you want to self-host it, you can always FTP those files over if you're web savvy and, new and know how to do that. If not, there's plenty of other hosts out there. I list some throughout the book as well. But anyways, let's get started. This is, once again, the simplest way to get into doing 360 virtual tours, practicing outside, as you saw, the footage went lickety-split. When we 
bring it inside in future videos and we start incorporating flash, yeah, it does take longer, but one of the things you'll see, the results are phenomenally better. But so there's that fine line of, is it too much time on site? Is it too much time editing? What's the best uh, way to, you can price this for your customers? Anyways, a lot to get into in future videos. A lot of this is covered in the book as well. Let's get started now, taking our footage and making our first 360 virtual tour panel. Ready? Let's go. Okay, we can see here we've got our five shots. The one all the way over here to the left, that's our zenith. That was when we pointed the camera straight up and the rest of these are our rotational shots. Now, of course, you can see in some of these shots that there is my tripod. That's where uh, I was standing. If we look over here, there's me waving, I'm in the glass. I'm not too concerned about this. This is a practice shot to show how we would deal with this. Once again, if you're using, instead of just the self timer, if you're using the shutter release, then you can move completely out of the way when one of these shots needs to be fired. You won't get in any of the reflections. This is practice, it's fun to do, so let's get started on what this is. The next step we want to use is PT GUI. So with PT GUI over here, it's a very simple process. You load it up and there's a project assistant. It's just a three-step process that we're going to do. So we're going to take all these images. This is just VX uh, uh, NXI, uh, View NXI from Nikon. You can use Windows Explorer or anything that you have. If you're on Mac, whatever tools. Take all these images and just drag them over. Now, I'm using TIFFs in this case. And one of the things I've explained in prior videos and throughout my books is that when it comes to exterior shots, I like to do TIFFs. But one of the things you'll see in the virtual tour book is that also typically there's other pre-processing that's done for the interior, the exterior, no, not at all. In fact, you don't want to do much processing at all. You don't want to do that until after everything is stitched. But when we get into doing interiors, we're going to be using Lightroom to do the and Photoshop to do that. Uh, certain type of flash ambient blending and window pulls, not to the full extent that we would do in standard interior work. But anyways, the process always remains the same then in my workflow is that I have TIFFs that have been exported that I'm going to now use. Okay, so drag those TIFFs over there and all you have to do, that was step one. Step two is click the Align Images button and once you do, Boom, it made our pano for us. Now, things can go wrong at this point, um, and you'll notice it more inside or with close distances, or especially if you don't have your parallax uh, point calibrated yet. So those are things known as control points, um, and I'll cover that also in the book and through future videos as well. Anyways, this looks good. I don't have to do anything else to it. Uh, I'm gonna close this particular window. It's the panorama editor in PT GUI, and all I'm gonna do is say create panorama. Now, the one thing I'm gonna do, it defaults here to uh, a JPEG usually. I've set my default settings to go to TIFF and to also 16-bit, something that I do recommend that you do, and now it's defaulting to where that footage is uh, in that particular directory and going to make this particular file name. You can name it to whatever you want. We'll keep it as the same name. No big deal. Now the next thing is you just hit the create panorama button and it just generates that TIFF file. We're done. Our panorama has now been made. So let's go to Photoshop. And now over here, I've got this file that was made, this TIFF. I'm just going to drag it over. This is what was created then out of PT GUI. Now you can see that I didn't shoot the nadir and the deer, however you want to say it, down here at the bottom. So it's showing up empty, and that's not that big a deal. I can put an easy patch on that. Now at this point, I might want to do some other editing. So well, let's go ahead and do some of that. I'm going to just duplicate this layer by doing Control J. And now I can bring up uh, the camera raw filter, which will have all of my various presets in it. So I've got one that I like to use for exteriors, um, which doesn't do, uh, does a no uh, uh, verticals, which you don't want to do. Um, but I'm going to do a light bump uh, like this, maybe with some sharpening on it. Or I can do something with, let's say, something on the exterior. This I like to. Uh, we can take a look then at what's been done here. This is just some settings I typically do for exterior work, bringing up some of the shadows. You can really push it now. Compared to using a portable 360 camera, which is very limited on how far you can push the dynamic range, using a DSLR, the world's our oyster. So let's bump up that saturation too. We've got some 
some good looking stuff here. Sharpness doesn't look too bad. Let's see what that detail was. The detail and sharpening was about 30 with that type of a mask. I could even sharpen it more if I wanted to. Bring it up way high. Because once again, this is a TIFF. It's almost a raw file. So anyways, all the things that you would want to do in Lightroom, you can do with just Adobe Camera Raw. And that looks good. I'm going to click OK. Now, cutting ahead to then putting a little patch on here, you can see the difference. Boom, real simple. Now, I'm gonna be covering other videos on doing the patch, so just real quick though, because it will annoy me just to have nothing down there at the bottom, I'm gonna make a new layer, uh, <clears throat> and I'm gonna just call it a new layer, uh, whatever, and then I'm gonna just fill that layer with black. So I'm gonna go to my default colors, take my paint bucket tool and paint that all black. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and size that down so it's just covering up that, and boom, we got our patch, we're done. Now that will show up then different than that blank area once we get to uh, the uh, hosting process. Now, I show some better patches um, that you can have logos or some special text or whatever it is that you want uh, inside that patch area underneath. Now that may look like a lot of area down here that's been robbed, but it's not once we host it. Now the next thing is we want to turn this into a JPEG. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do, I like to do a convert file, make sure that I got the right format. You could flatten it, whatever. But in this case, you can see it since it was a Nikon sRGB, I like to work with the standard sRGB. So doing that, it's just a small preference, hardly worth mentioning. The idea here, bottom line, is you wanna be able to then flatten this and then just save it as a JPEG. So I'm going to save it as a JPEG and let's go ahead and call this outside. That's it. Okay, now let's save that. Now, when we go back over here to take a look at the files, we can see that outside is here. So that's the JPEG pano with our little Nader patch or Nadir patch uh, that's down there. Now to host it. I'm going to use Marzipano tool. So marzipano.net slash tool. Pause if you need that URL. It's also in the book. It's one of the uh, tools that I recommend for self-hosting if you have web experience. For here, you don't need web experience. This is just to look at our pano. So go there, hit start. It wants you to drag some panos, and that's what we'll do. We'll drag outside on over there. Boom. and then it'll start making that panel. Now this is gonna be a very large file. If you're used to using, for instance, a, a Ricoh Theta Z1 or an Insta 361X or some other portable camera like the Ku Cam, then you're used to using uh, some files that are about maybe 7,000 pixels wide or so. These are huge. These are massive files. Once again, they're coming out of a DSLR. You could about imagine how big they are. And you can already see just how crisp that is looking. It's still building it though, as you can see on the left. So a lot of stuff going on there. But as you can see, as that's turning around, that's being built, that's looking really nice, really good quality. There's me waving at you. Look at that, just beautiful. Now it's a little bit jittery right now because it is um, doing its thing as it's making it. Now it's complete, and now we can move this around. We can take a look. That is our 360 pano. And at the very end, if we were to really zoom this around and take Take a look at it in high res, it's going to look like this. Now the last thing you would do out of Mars a Pano if you wanted to is you would export this and other panos that you put in along with all your navigation, your arrows, information, icons, whatever, and then you could host that yourself someplace, just FTP it all over. But uh, that's a big step if you don't have web experience. This though gets you a very inexpensive way to get your feet wet to try this. PT GUI, you can download it for free. Sorry, I just hit my desk, I just noticed that. Um, PT GUI is free to try, it'll leave a watermark, but once again, this is just, you can see the effort, the workflow, try things out first. But PT GUI is about, I think it's $145, and that's just an unlimited license. So it's a very good price for what you get out of it. You can also use PT GUI throughout other workflows through your portable. 360 cameras. This isn't the only way that I shoot uh, 360 virtual tours. This is only a portion of it. It's something I talk about called the hybrid approach throughout the book, the various pricing structures based off if it's all just portable 360s, if it's some of this in 360s, the portables, or if it's 
everything all in using DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Anyways, the next steps that we'll be covering uh, coming up will be then how do we get into this further? And of course, that's now taking it inside. What do we do about shooting an interior pano? So to, to do this scene and eventually then leading up to the big daddy of all, and that's doing flash, the flash ambient technique and using window pulls so we get those stunning, crisp, clear views to the outside. And that will be coming up in future videos. It's all covered throughout the book. If you want to jump ahead and start going through those steps, once again, a link to the book is in the description for this video. Anyways, I hope this was useful for you. I hope that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you want to see more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.